how I use my fighting knowledge to create a unique style of Chinese lion dancing. Welcome back, my friend. I hope you're having a great day. As usual, let's get straight into it. Now, you know that I've gotten into Chinese lion dancing with my oldest daughter. We've been doing it for about three years now. And I had the ability to take my fighting experiences in the cage, in the ring, boxing, kickboxing, mixed martial arts, and blend it with Chinese lion dancing. First and foremost, I'd like to give a shout out to everyone in our group, Hawaii Lion Dance Association. They allowed me the space to be creative and really bring my philosophies and ideas to what they were already doing. So shouts out to them. Thank you. Now, when I first found out about Chinese lion dancing as a kid in elementary school, it was a way for the Chinese culture to celebrate Chinese New Year's along with fighting away evil spirits and bringing in abundance. On top of that, it was a way for martial artists to display their kung fu to other clubs without hurting each other, without it getting into any fighting altercations. So for me, this is what I base my style on, expressing my fighting abilities, martial arts abilities, without actually hitting somebody in the face. So a lot of my unique style of Chinese lion dancing comes in the form of footwork, speed, and a lot of extension. Extension on the punches, extension on the kicks, but more so just weight transfer, just really throwing with power when you're throwing shots along with the footwork, along with speed and technicalities. Keeping to the theme of Chinese culture, Kung Fu, mixed martial arts, I get a lot of my inspiration from Kung Fu movies. Born Invincible, if you recognize this one, I like to really emphasize the stances. Like I said, back then, the Kung Fu martial artists would use the Chinese lion dancing foot sun style to really display their Kung Fu abilities. So I do the same thing. I watch a lot of Kung Fu movies and I base my movements on that. Then the magic happens along with the Kung Fu inspired moves. I then take my boxing style. As you can see with the punching, when I box, I really like to throw my punches, utilize my length with my arms. I got really long arms. And when I punch, I really like to throw it and stroke it all the way in. No short changing on my punches. So I use the same mentality with the Chinese lion dancing. When I'm shooting out the head, the way that I do it, the way that I learned it from my lion dance teacher, he uses the head. There's a horn on top of the head. We use that to ram. As you saw in that last clip with the Kung Fu movie, Born Invincible, he was doing like a head move where he cracked the water bottle with the top of his head. Same concept. We use the lion head to ram. We're ramming away those evil spirits. So this is what it looks like. Extension on the punches, extension on the ramming. To really display the art of ramming, I studied animals who fight especially animals that have horns like a ram as you can see the chinese lion dance me on the bottom that's me using the head to ram looks very similar to the ram in the top picture same exact extension that i use on my boxing with my right hand as you can see with the cross i really extend it out same stance that's a gung dong stance gung dong in translation is a bow stance and as a fighter i had to come to understand that in fighting we use a lot of classical kung fu karate stances yet it'll look different when you're using the stance to apply actual punching power weight transfer on the legs bringing that power up into the hips then extending it fully extending it out the arm so when you throw a punch or when you're ramming with the chinese lion head it's gonna go through the target not just stop at its surface with the extension on the punching to really get that power in the ramming i then took my muhammad ali float like a butterfly sting like a bee style footwork then applied it to chinese lion dancing in this clip like I said, fighting. So I'll approach slowly, then utilize my boxing footwork. Boop, boop, boop. Speed, intensity, angles, using my boxing footwork, again, to ward away the evil spirit. In this clip is another example of how I use my footwork and I transferred it over. I'm a switch hitter. I can hit left and right hand. As you can see, this is what the clip looks like with the extension. In a traditional sense, I go from gung dong, ahing dong to gung dong, that little cross transition 
is called an ahindong. I like to really cross it over 180 and extend it to really show the strength, the flexibility, and the dexterity within my stances. And because of my boxing background, I have the ability to throw a lot of ramming power while being fluid on my feet. So of course, being fluid on my feet allows me to really be a switch hitter, switch between left and right hand stances, southpaw, conventional, while throwing kicks, while throwing punches, while creating angles. And I took all of this fluidity on my feet, on my kicks, with my hands, with my angles, really being technical, and applied it to Chinese line dancing. I can really be in different angles, different footing, different stances in really small spots. Here's a great example of it. I'm getting into the red and white line. I'm in a small spot, so I'll just use my footwork, my technicalities, my strength, putting stances together fluidly in a tight spot. This is a Tong Dong stance. I put it in a different forward direction to really display my strength and my balance, throwing a kick straight into another Tong Dong stance, fluid transition in the footwork, boxing footwork, and that's how I display my fluidity and technicality. As far as my kicks, I like to throw a lot of front kicks. Reason being was I was fast with my hands. So the front kicks allowed me to kick straight to the eyes and the face, allowing it to be a distraction for my hands. When you do a front kick, a lot of times your feet and your hands will be at the same distance. So I could kick you at the same distance that I could hit you. So I'd use my front kicks to flutter the eyes, really catch you off guard, then pop you with my combination up top. And I took that same philosophy and applied it to the Chinese line dancing. A lot of guys will use the kicks as a way to sweep the beard. Same thing for me. Great. Front kicks really help to bring my foot up to the head of the beard and I can sweep it over. Really give it a nice clean look when I'm kicking. One thing that I got from my fighting style with the kicks is checking kicks. A lot of times when I'm really throwing out a combo on a guy's face, he really wants to take my legs out so he would throw leg kicks and I had to really utilize checking low kicks with this kind of stance traditional muay thai checking of the kicks that's the great bukal to the right that's me to the left i take my understanding of checking low kicks brought it to the chinese lion dancing again when i throw a punch i'm not just gonna just stay in the pocket sometimes i'm gonna step back really create that distance again to really utilize another power shot but until then when i step back from my hit i'm gonna Bring my leg up just in case he wants to throw a kick. So I do the same thing with the Chinese lion dancing. After I do an extremely hard ramp, I'll come up, create distance by checking the kick. Then I'll come back in when it's safe, go in for the kill. And that's just a basic rundown of how I use my fighting knowledge and incorporate it into Chinese lion dancing, helping everyone around me to evolve and express their authentic selves while uplifting the Chinese lion dance culture. And with that, I'll leave you with this. Add five pupils. The first pupil, he practiced the centipede style. The speed he moved was as fast as a centipede. Now number two practiced the snake style. He had the speed of the snake. The third one, number three, practiced the scorpion style. The style resembles the scorpion pincer. The four, in fact, the lizard is a very agile and nimble style. The fifth pupil, he practiced the toad style. Toad style is immensely strong and immune to nearly any weapon. When it's properly used, it's almost invincible.